Today I'm excited to share with you one of my favourite tools for creating mixed media art, luminance coloured pencils. I'll start by swatching my pencils, then I'm going to show you the three main ways I incorporate these pencils into Italian landscape scenes in my sketchbook. Hi, I'm Omar, I'm an artist, illustrator and author, and I help other artists improve their skills by sharing my knowledge from filling 40 sketchbooks over the last few years. And I shall reveal the luminance pencils that I use the most right at the end, so please stick around for that. I love to add coloured pencils to landscapes, florals, and they are great when sketching on location. These are currently all the luminance coloured pencils I use. If you didn't realise, they're by an art brand called Caran Dash. I have 22 in my set right now, but I do keep adding to them, maybe a few every month. Before we continue, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm going to swatch these out for you so you can see how they look on paper. The sketchbook I'm using is the Molesky and Watercolour book. Starting with the Golden Bismuth Yellow 820, it's a really beautiful bright buttercup yellow. If you go over it again, it gets really, really rich and creates a sense of warmth and often use it to add an accent colour. It's a gorgeous pop of brightness. This one is Yellow Ochre 034. It's got such a lovely baked golden colour and a slight brownish undertone. And I think it gives a sense of warmth and naturalness, especially when you add it to landscapes or natural objects. As we go along, you'll see that a lot of my colours are quite muted. Uh, very few brights in my collection. Quite similar to how I use my watercolours. And I will say that's really important when you select your own colours. Now, let's take a look at Raw Sienna 036. This is a lot more brown than the watercolour version that I'm used to. It is quite similar to Yellow Ochre, but it's got that hint of earthiness. I use it for ridges on mountains or pebbles along a stream. This pink is really subtle and warm. It's called Anthroquinone Pink. 571. It's really difficult to pronounce. I might just call it Anthra Pink from now on. I will give you a list of all the colour pencils in the description below. I use this shade a lot as it adds a lovely pop of brightness and vibrancy to a piece. It's really eye-catching and it can add a lot of energy to my artwork. This one is called Cornelian 850. It's a pencil that I've bought pretty recently. I realised that I didn't have a type of orange in my collection. It's almost verging on scarlet. Really warm and vibrant and great for an accent colour. Next up is a beautiful raspberry red, which is also a fairly recent purchase. It's called Purplish Red 350. I do think it is leaning towards the red side than purple. It's really dynamic and striking colour and I use it quite sparingly because it's quite bold. This one says Perilene Brown 585 although I use it as a deep earthy red because it's really rich with warm brown undertones and I use it a lot to add contrast to my pieces. Now these two look quite similar but one is cooler and one is warm and that's how I select a lot of my coloured pencils. Let's move on to Crimson Aubergine 599. I hope you're going to see this on camera. It's a shade darker in value and cooler than that brown next to it and it's really helpful for food illustrations. There are several versions of aubergine and this one is light aubergine 095. It's a warm mid purple and I might use this for shadows in a few of my pieces. Let's take a look at the next one which is Carmine Lake, Carmine Lake 575. It is another beautiful rich brown colour and it's one that I often reach for as it has a myriad of uses because it's the super dark value. Let's show you Warm Earth 70% 748. As it says, it's a lovely warm earthy quality and it's often used to create a sense of depth, especially when I'm doing landscapes. I find it's such a versatile pencil to have. It is a touch cooler than that Carmine Lake. 
Now Green Ochre 025 is an earthy green colour. It's got quite subtle organic quality to it, especially if you're doing something natural like leaves or trees and landscapes as well. This one is Olive Brown 039. Yes, it may be a brown, but it has a really subtle green undertone. And I will say there's a touch of warmth and a organic softness compared to some of the more obvious browns. I really love this one. This is Dark Fallow Green 719. It's a deep, intense green that has cool blue undertones and it's especially useful for subjects like forests or foliage. This one is terrific. It's Dark Sap Green 739 and it's on the warm end of the green scale and it adds a sense of depth and naturalness and I'd probably change it out between this one and the Fallow Green for a line of trees for example. This one is probably the brightest pencil in my set. It's called Chrysocolor Blue. I don't think I've pronounced that right. It's 761 and it's a really vivid blue green color. Uh, very vibrant, quite dynamic. I probably bought it for skies, but it can equally be used for seascapes or anything that has a body of water, perhaps lakes as well. I think this one is ice blue 185 and it behaves more like a deep turquoise it's towards the blue end of the scale and it really reminds me of being 30 meters underwater it's a beautiful beautiful blue now i would say this next one which is malachite green 180 is on the green side of turquoise it has a real lushness and vitality to it Again, you could probably add this to any sort of water or lakes or seascapes. This one is French Grey, and I'd been looking to buy this for ages. It's a real soft muted grey colour that is quite subtle, but I would say almost sophisticated, and it's great for adding warm shadows. This one is sepia, 50%. 906 and it's just that one step darker in value than the French grey. It's a little bit deeper so it's very useful for outlines and adding contrast details. Whereas this sepia is warm this one is slate grey 495 and it is of a similar value but it's on the cooler scale and it's great for adding details because it looks quite similar to a graphite pencil but it's got that softness to it and similarly this is Payne's Grey 507 it serves a similar purpose I do use it quite sparingly because it's quite dense I really hope you've enjoyed seeing me swatch my coloured pencils please do take a moment to like comment and subscribe if you would like more content like this it really helps with the algorithm and I appreciate all your support. Now we are moving on to the demos where you'll see some of the colour pencils in action. These were for a Patreon session that Katie Moody put on. It was a live stream some, from some Italian towns. You'll notice that I pre-prepared the pages with ink. I just slapped them on so I already have some mid-tones to work with. Let's start with tip one. I use colour pencils for sketching. I select a dark value that fits in with the palette of the overall scheme. On this occasion I've selected Crimson Aubergine and I'm going to use it to sketch the line framework of this piazza. Starting with that central building, I'm only going to place the minimum guidelines for the front of this building. It's really just a box. And now for the buildings on either side where we have to bring in a little bit of perspective. Also, these arches are not accurate, but at this stage and with the time I have, it's the best I can manage. Now I've got some guidelines, I start filling in the buildings with watercolour. Only really roughly that roof first and then the arches underneath which are much darker value. I'm using kind of a dark burgundy brown and varying it slightly by mixing in a little bit of Van Dyke brown or a purple. 
I'm seeking out the darkest areas of this scene, which is basically the shadows on the left, and also the arches of the main building. And here, on the right, which is in shadow, and at the back is only the suggestion of the hills in the background, which is a light Payne's grey. Tip number two, I use coloured pencils to add details. I'm using a light aubergine and I decided on a few guides first for the placement of the windows and then I make a start on the arches underneath. The other areas which appear very dark is the underneath of the lip of that roof and also the chimney. Moving over to the main building, I know it needs a few more windows but you'll notice that I didn't fill in every single one and I often do that just to keep it interesting and I don't have time. Now for something you may not know about me, I cannot draw cars for toffee. Let's go back to these arches. They are super duper dark under there. Now for tip number three. I use coloured pencils for adding shadows and contrast. So I'm going to use the Carmine Lake and pressing pretty hard to create that extra layer of contrast. And this area just to the right really needs extra definition because it's the edge of the building. It will really create a lot of depth and bring that building forward. I think that's made quite a difference by bumping up the contrast of that watercolour and it just tells the story of this piazza a lot better. I'm going to take you through the other Italian landscapes from that Patreon session. I will be using the exact same techniques that I've just mentioned, where I'm using the colour pencil for sketching and then adding details and then looking at the shadows and contrast. Now, as promised, I'm going to show you the five luminance colour pencils that I use the most. I know this because they are the five shortest <laughs> since I started buying them in the summer of 2022. First off is the Carmine Lake 575, then it's the Dark Fallow Green 719, this one is Dark Sap Green 739, the one next to it is Warm Earth, 748, also French Grey, 808. I want to end by saying, don't think you need to go out and buy the exact same colours. As mentioned, these particular shades suit my preferences. 
and the subject matter that I most like to paint. I am just naturally drawn to warm, muted, earthy tones. But if you're into seascapes, then you probably want a lot more blues and greens than you see in my particular collection. I really hope you're going to enjoy using colour pencils in your work in future. Let me know if there's any other questions that you might need answered. Pop it in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Stay amazing!